Hi everybody, I'm Michael Lewis Anderson and welcome to my world. We're here today, I want to share with you through the, through the request from the Princess Victoria Romanovna to show you how to make a wedding cake that we made in St. Petersburg and this wedding cake has been transformed into a, a Christmas log. So I want to show you how to make that, there's a few steps to make. Uh, the recipe will be posted, it has already actually been posted and the recipe will be posted and you'll be able to find that via the imperial site of the Russian Romanovs. Okay, now, so what we're going to do, this cake is actually a delicious cake made from uh, almonds and orange water and raspberries, blueberries. So first of all, what we have to do, I'm going to have to start making the meringue that will cover the cake. So if you want to follow me, and we're going to do that here. So I'm going to make a Swiss meringue. The Swiss meringue is actually made with uh, egg whites and sugar. So we've got to cook this, but it's going to take a while whilst it's mixing. It's going to take a little bit of a while for me uh, for it to go cold, actually. So whilst get this on the job first, on the go, and then I will show you how to make whilst we're making the, the Christmas log together then this is going cold on the machine and it should be ready hopefully when the cake is finished now this is just sugar and egg white you have to mix this until there's no sugar crystals very easy to make sometimes when you see a recipe and you think oh my god this is quite difficult to do um, I believe in simplicity. When we got the request to go to Russia, to St. Petersburg for this imperial wedding, the first thing that came to my mind, making this cake, was one, it had to taste good, but also the second thing was, would we have the ingredients while we are over there? And I was really surprised to find that there's so much more ingredients there than what we have here. In, uh, to our availability. So this is going to take a little bit of wine. So it's been quite exciting to be asked to make this imperial wedding cake in Russia. The first Romanov wedding in Russia since 127 years. It was, uh, it was so fantastic to be able to have that opportunity this once in a lifetime and to be able to create history it's been amazing. I was requested by Rebecca for a cake that reminded her of her childhood. Stories that her grandmother told her when she was a child. Uh, being from Italy, she wanted a cake that tasted like a memory of orange water. Uh, uh, so when I say orange water, she, her memory was, uh, grandmother used to say, when you smell the orange blossom, in the breeze, so I, I'm already dreaming, I can imagine it's in the evening, the soft spring evening, early summer, it's a time for weddings. And you can imagine this smell and this fragrance of these orange blossoms in, in the countryside, in the region of Italy. Now, from this, that was my base to make a cake with orange water. Now, as we all know, orange water is its, its particular taste. If you overdo it, uh, it's going to taste like uh, like you're eating uh, perfume. And this was quite a challenge because all royal wedding cakes, up until now, have all been recognised in history. And this was the aim: is that we would make a cake that could be used for a wedding, birthdays, or any other celebration. And this is this we achieved something fresh, something light, and quite tasty. So, apart from the meringue, where, which we're making now, the true cake that we made for the wedding didn't have any, it wasn't covered in meringue um, by the request of the bride. Um, so, let me feel this, it's getting warm. You have to continue turning it. Otherwise, if you don't turn it, it's going to burn and you're going to get scrambled eggs. And this we don't want. So getting warm and the crystals are almost almost disappearing when you've got no like a sand effect 
crystal inside, then you're ready to take it off the heat. And then this is quite good. That's perfect. Okay, this I'm going to stop. Remove this. And then in a sterile bowl, this has got to be completely sterile. Uh, sterile means no grease at all inside. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have a problem. Your meringue will not uh, will not become firm. We may have that problem today, and if we do, then it's going to be one of those loops. So this is going to go in here. As you see, it's quite hot. Now, what we have to do with that? Put the whisk. It's broken. Actually, I need to get a new one, and then we'll just turn that on. The time we're doing the rest of the cake, that will be, should be cold. So I hope that this is not going to be any interference with the sound of this. Let's put it back. Well, I'm doing this. So, now this, this is where the magic begins. What, what you see in front of me is a sheet of paper, greased with paper, baking paper. We're going to make the cake with what part of the ingredient is actually Russian buttercream. Russian buttercream is very easy to make. It's equal quantities of butter, unsalted or salted up to you, and condensed milk. And uh, you know, everybody, we all love condensed milk. So into this, I mix it on the machine, very easy, salt and butter, condensed milky quantities and then raspberry juice inside no extra sugar in the coolie so what you see here what I'm doing what I have in front of me is a plastic sheet maybe you've never seen anybody work like this before but this is how I work I work uh, I create my foundation so this is what we're going to be doing you will understand afterwards what I'm doing so the buttercream is actually, the plastic is on underneath, you see? And then we spread the lightly with the buttercream. That's perfect. I already did this before, so we could go a little bit quicker. At least we don't need any more for the moment. And then what we're going to do, so this can be done in any way, it can also be done for a birthday cake or a wedding cake in this, in this manner. So this is a cake that I made, it's absolutely delicious. Now the original recipe was without, without almonds. Now this is a very heavy, moist cake made with, with almonds and absolutely delicious to eat. Now I'm thinking in my mind, remember we're in Russia. Russia doesn't have any almonds. How wrong can you be, you know? We went to Russia, they had everything. The recipe changed immediately. The cakes we actually made in the Astoria Hotel, and thanks to them, everything was absolutely wonderful. Now, this is a mold that I'm gonna use. You can use any mold. This is a professional aluminium mold made for making either ice cream inside or cake. You can use a, a piece of guttering. So now, you see how easy that is? We're actually following the shape and it's already inside. So there's a reason why this is an excess of paper. Now what we're gonna do here, I've just broken it, but that's no problem because everything is, we can catch up on. Now, what we're going to do now is put some raspberry scully inside. Now this is absolutely, this is going to give you uh, a texture of bitter, uh, not too sweet, there's no sugar inside there. So, you're going to put this inside, and to spread on the sides, you're going to paint it. Now this is a perfectly sterile brush, only used for that. Get it from a DIY store. To get on the sides, we paint the sides. Now this is actually going to give you more flavor. You can use any, if you don't want raspberry, you, you don't, if you're allergic or anything, you can remove the raspberry. 
So how can you make a cake from beginning to finish and shortly that it's not too long for you to follow? So everything is being prepared beforehand. But when you get everything prepared for your cake, the, the making of it, it will go quite quickly. Now I can hear by the sound of the machine that the texture of this meringue is already taking. So here we are. As you see here, it's already rising up, it's already getting thicker. It will go cold. It's magic, isn't it? So now, the next step. This is, this is our Christmas log shape. Now, I need to put ends on. These ends are just so we don't, so I can fill up with the cream. And just to stop that the cream will come out. I'm already pre-prepared with cellar tape. There. The second one. Now I was only asked you today to could I show this recipe online and I thought, okay, why not? Up for the challenge. Now, let's close these ends off. I'm gonna close it off with a little bit of the buttercream. This is still the raspberry bucket cream that we made. Now you'll think that it's quite sweet, but it's not actually. It's it's a neutral in flavour. I'm going to pipe a, a line here, and this you'll see that when you cut the cake, that you'll see is a piece of decoration. No, simple. Now, next thing. This is, we're going to make the cream now. This is the essence of the cake, which will give it structure. And it's one of my favorite creams, actually. It's Fresh cream and pastry cream, equal quantities. As you see inside, I don't know if you can see it, but there's many, many little grains of vanilla. This is fresh vanilla. As I said, I thought that we'd go to Russia and we wouldn't have that, but you see all these little, little grains? These are gonna explode in your mouth. Now, this is, this is a frigorant. It's, uh, as you see, the one that we've used is actually bio, bio, uh, biological. There's lots of synthetic flavors out there. I don't want to, didn't want to work like that. Now, there's a story about this. When I got to Russia, I actually, I actually called on all my friends to bring a bottle of that with them in their suitcase. Now, I've already mixed this in the cream, but since I made it a little bit earlier, I want to add a little bit more. It's roughly about 10% of that inside the cream. This is slightly warm for the simple reason but this is gelatin. Now, I, you look at the recipe, when you have the recipe in front of you, there's, the gelatin is quite, there's quite, maybe, how can I say, not too much, it's absolutely perfect for this recipe because I wanted a cake which would stand up and be strong. And you can actually put a little bit less gelatin inside and then the cream is a little bit more lighter. But this is absolutely perfect for any wedding cake or... You need a structure. For example, if you're making something like this, this cake here, you need a structure inside. So to be able to do that, you need the gelatin. To be able to work, to get the smooth sides on the outside, you need to work also with the buttercream. So there we are. When we arrived in St. Petersburg, we were so lucky with the weather. We And where we were actually staying to make the cake, this showpiece was actually made in our apartment where we were. And did we know, did we not know that the following day, when we, we arrived in the evenings, but when we went woke up in the morning and we went outside and we saw where we were, if we were actually in the Golden Triangle, as they call it. Um, it was really next to the Hermitage, next to the Holy Blood, uh, the, the Spilled Blood, the, uh, the Basilic, absolutely wonderful. 
So what we've done here, this is fresh cream, no sugar, because that's the secret. If you're putting too much sugar with your orange water, it's not going to be very agreeable sweet. So this will go inside here. Absolutely delicious. And we're just going to fold this in very lightly. Now, you see it's quite yellow because the eggs that I used are uh, farm eggs, free range chickens, and you can still see the vanilla running in, uh, flowing inside. We have to just fold this in. This will actually firm, go firm. So as you see, it's very easy. All these recipes that I've been using, everything is actually 50-50. So here we've got 50% butter, uh, uh, for the buttercream is 50% butter and condensed milk. This is 50% pastry cream and fresh cream. The raspberry sauce is exactly the same. 50 50 there look at that this is absolutely delicious i'm going to taste it see if there's enough orange pork inside i'm going to put a little bit more there's no problem for that because like i was saying the gelatin is quite put a little bit extra gelatin inside it's one of those things that you have to taste i said 10 percent of the cream quantity and that should be enough other people want more, you know, it's a matter of choice. So here we are. Now I'm going to look for this. Now my meringue is almost finished, so I better get a move on. So here we are. Pastry bag, cream inside. So this is. So when you see this, if you know, when you see this cream being made, uh, I'm going to put a pair of scissors and I don't find them. Oh, there they are. So just put the end on. So get rid of that because we don't want to find that in the cake. Now I'm going to advance this to move this forward for me. Now this is the cream, as you see all those little explosions of vanilla inside. Now the cream here, what we're going to do, I'm going to put the cream in like this. And then, this is a secret, the blueberries. I absolutely love blueberries. I wanted to create a cake which blueberry, I wanted a fruit that you could get all the year round. You know, I wanted a fruit that when you cut the cake, the fruit wouldn't bleed. Because I didn't know that whilst being over there, would I have to make the cake a week before? Would we have to make the cake uh, the day before? So we actually made the cake actually on the day before the wedding. Absolutely fantastic making that in the don't tell a story or something. This is all the fruit inside. Now what I'm going to do is slightly put a bit here. So we're going to seal that. Don't be afraid to push. This is absolutely okay. Now you can put any fruit, other fruits. Another fruit that I love is actually um, red currants. Absolutely delicious. One of my favorite fruits. So, what we're going to do now, if you follow me, we've got a little bit of biscuit here. Now, the recipe that you'll see that's given, it will make this size. Okay? So, that's um, absolutely perfect for that. Let's have a look at this inside here. We're going to generously coat that again with uh, the raspberry, raspberry sauce. Just down a little bit. A little bit more raspberry sauce. A 
as you see it's quite easy it's very easy to make you just have to work with good ingredients finest quality don't be cheap use the best almonds so that should be enough because it's not a raspberry cake now I'm going to bring this towards me more of the cream as you see the cream is getting quite thick already it's already taking hold there's no problem for that so we're going to now fill this so I've got friends in America that have always wanted they wanted one of these for Christmas and I sent him the recipe because obviously uh, I'm sure we can ship it. The, cat, the cake actually travels quite well because we actually took one home with us from after the wedding and I wanted to really see how well this cake can travel and we tasted the cake eight days after, after the wedding here at home in Belgium so eight days after no, not being frozen because this is the wonderful thing about this cake. Uh, you will see that it firms up very, very easily, and there's no need to freeze it, which is actually the tendons of all these, all the pastry and confection work. Everything is already pre-frozen, and the advantage with this is not. It's absolutely perfect now just going to finish this off with the last bit of cream now the thing is when I was making this when the guests tasted this and guests have tasted it all for previous since everybody always asks when you cut into it which we'll see what about what's that for fruit so now we're just going to finish this off And the last piece here. So this is this is for snacks afterwards. Absolutely delicious. So you close the baby. Baby's closed now. And that's it finished. We have to put in the refrigerator and then remove it because it, I do have one already previously made which I will show you and let me just remove this whole other clean work table and when you look at the meringue the meringue is completely By the way, have you seen my apron? These were made specially for the wedding and all the servers uh, serving the dessert at the wedding after the wedding cake wore one of these. So this is the Royal Imperial Ember of George and Victoria Romanov. Now, so, as you see, one, you see this is firm perfect let's put this in the fridge in the refrigerator so as you see this is um i i molded it from the from the top let's say and i cut into a portion when you remove it then the plastic you have to remove the plastic of course and then you, I placed it on 
on a foam ball. This is perfect. You can either spray it with chocolate, get a velvety effect, or you can cover it directly with sugar paste, which this is absolutely fantastic. This is what we brought out already. Um, we started this as the prototype as well, not the prototype, but this is a, a, a brand new sugar paste and the royal sugar paste it is with my crown and and this is absolutely wonderful uh, this covers the cake perfectly uh, made by smart flex so smart flex were absolutely wonderful they sponsored all the wedding cake uh, all the ingredients for the covering of the wedding cake uh, all the sugar to cover the flour make the flowers uh, and this they shipped here to Belgium and then we took it everything over to Russia to make. Now I want to show you something here. When you cut this baby, look at that. Isn't that nice? And it's so easy, it's so, it's so nice and you see these little blueberries and people are eating this and saying what are those little blueberries? What are those little fruits? Now, here we are, oh, silence, silence is golden. So here we are, this is a meringue. It's already firm, you see? Already quite firm, great texture. A meringue that um, keeps a lot of its shape perfectly without any problem. And it, it's absolutely, it's not too sweet neither. This is a Swiss meringue. Maybe of your own recipe, this is one that I prefer to use very easy. So I'm going to actually be working from this side so well, maybe I'll come around there to the end so you can actually see me doing the piping. So this is with a star nozzle inside. Oops, you don't, don't worry about that explosion. Now it's not too hot, it's still warm, but it's not too hot that it's actually melting the buttercream. So if this base was ice cream, you can actually do the same with it. A little bit of cream inside that there. But I'm going to de decorate this. I wanted to make an effect. There was actually two versions that I made. One was covered with the sugar paste directly. And then there's this one, which I did with the meringue. The sugar paste looks very elegant and refined. And uh, this one looks, let's say, um, I wanted to make a baroque effect. And uh, when you see it finished, you'll say, yes, it's St. Petersburg, 100%, you know. It's more, let's say, more gourmand, more appetizing to see, see the meringue like this, you know. So you've got this extra meringue on the outside, which is absolutely wonderful. Easily done. As you see, my hands are always clean. Keeping the bag like this and opening it up. And then I will put the meringue inside. So. Nice of shaving cream. There we are. Just got to mix. As you see, I've not gone to the top. And this I will close. It will be my seal. When I do this now, it will explode. And that's what we have to get away. I'm just going to quickly finish this here. Back this way. I'm being lazy now. Going backwards and forwards. With this baby. Then one more here on the base, a little bit lower. So the ends, the ends have to be finished. So let's just do something quite. Let's go around like this.
the same on the other side. So now let's do something here. Let's make it Christmas Christmassy. I love the swirls of Baroque. Give it movement. Move it. Whoa, here we go. This is wow. Let's go in there. Because everything that we're going to put on here is going to be eaten anyway, which is fantastic. Look at that, isn't that looking stunning? Go there, a little bit there. They say less or more, but I always say more or less. You're going to see, we're going to have the most wonderful cake when it's finished. Now this. The reason I covered this on a smaller board is because I'm going to burn this. And to burn it, I don't want to burn the paper. So, this is just a small little blowtorch. You may have something bigger. The smell of this is absolutely wonderful. And I'm, oh, probably run out of gas, which I thought I would do. Yeah, because I, it's one of those glitches that happens, isn't it? So, just wait a minute. Got another idea, and I don't know where it is, so I'm just gonna do it a minute. So Patrick is gonna start filming with a few of the things whilst I do another option. This is a, actually a huge blow chart. It's like a Gato Norwegian when you see this. It gives a lot of show actually, the flames, but don't do this. Isn't that stunning? So now, I'm going to place that. This you would serve at least 20 people out of this one. Roughly 20 people. Now I'm going to decorate that. Already decorated that I've already pre-made. And this is the best part. So let's do a little bit of, this is cake. This is a cake glaze that I've made. And this here I find absolutely the Christmas effect that gives you an effect of St. Petersburg. All these beautiful castles, palaces from the era. That's already looking very stunning. Now, let's put a few little Christmas trees on here. These are made from marzipan. Little Christmas trees, little bit of decoration. You can imagine St. Petersburg with all the snow and the, and the beautiful palaces at this time of year. I'd love to be there. And let's do a little sprinkle. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous with the gold? This is actually real gold. And this I like also, a little bit of decoration Baroque of St. Petersburg from the Hermitage. And some spray, some little glitter, I don't know if you can see this, this is splinging away and you see how it shines. This is giving you 100% Christmas. Why not have a few candles? Because it is the birthday of Christ. I always like candles on my cakes. 
and so do the children and to top it off a little bit of decadence as if there's not enough gold already yeah a little bit of gold there a little bit of gold there and there Decoration is really, really up to you what you want to do. This is just me going for it here. And uh, I'm sure that when you bring this to any table, anybody's going to be really happy. And especially since you know that it's the royal wedding cake, the imperial wedding cake, and the cake of Victoria Romanovna, which is absolutely stunning. So that's my inspiration of Christmas for you. And I hope you like that. Remember that when you put the cake, the cake will look like that inside. So let's see if we can get a little candle still burning. There we are. And I'd like to wish you all a very, very happy Merry Christmas. And thank you all for watching. Also, at the same time, I'd like to also thank uh, Victoria Romanovna for asking me to make this. But today, let's say, is something, a special occasion. It's a special day because it's the birthday of the Grand Duchesse Maria. And uh, we all celebrate this birthday with you. Have a lovely day and make wonderful things for the future. God bless to you all. Love you. The recipe you will be able to find on the Imperial uh, Romanov website.